It's time for another unit guide. We've covered four of the six factions in the Sturgians, Batanians, Kazate, and Azerai unit guides. And today we are going to be discussing the Valandians, the precursor to the Swadians from Mountain Blade Warband. And this is going to be a pretty interesting one. I think that for a lot of people, Vlandia and or uh, Vlandia and in the Imperial Army kind of make up the two top tier armies right now. Just because I think you have so many shock cav or so much shock cav um, accessible through the noble line for Vlandia, and for um, Imperial, you have just ha so much armor across the archers, across their noble line with their cataphracts, and across their infantry. Tree. It's going to be a very interesting video today as we discuss all of the many um, units of the Vlandian army. And if you this is your first time tuning in, the way I like to do these is we're going to go through each tier, two, three, four, and five of just the base unit. Then we'll cover the nobles in their own line, the noble line as I call it. And I'll be then ranking each unit within each tier, either low, mid, or high. And at the very end, as per the request of a lot of you guys, I will be putting up a picture that shows um, all of the rankings kind of summarized. So if you want to just go ahead and jump ahead to the end of that, you're going to be able to see the chapters and the um, table of contents in the description and in the timeline. So you can jump to whatever relevant um, tier you would like to. Well, let's get started on our unit guide for Vlandia. As always, we'll be starting with Tier 2. We skip over Tier 1 because for the most part for every faction, Tier 1 is pretty much the same. Now this will be interesting because this is the first time we will be reviewing a crossbow unit in the Levy Crossbowman, and then the other Tier 2 unit is the Footman. So crossbows are a pretty interesting situation right now in the current game. Um, they are, for the most part, very accurate, and they do high damage, but they are quite slow to reload. So in my opinion... Crossbows really need a mass in order to really be successful. If you have five archers, I feel like they're going to be more useful than five crossbowmen. Whereas if you have 25 crossbowmen, you have so many shots being put down range, it really kind of um, balances out that slow reload. And especially as we kind of progress through this list, you're going to see that crossbow reload speed will start to increase. But right now with the levy crossbowmen, um, again, I, I think that they're only good in mass. Uh, they're only one of two pure archers at tier two. The only other one is the Imperial Archer, right? That's the only one that starts out at tier two. The rest kick in at tier three or four, depending on which faction we're looking at. And again, we're looking at something like this. High damage at 75 pierce damage, but slow speed at around 62 speed. And it's going to start to be interesting as we progress through these tiers because you'll see that your your speed is going to be 20 some odd um, speed less than a normal bow. But the damage should just around be double depending on what situation it is or at least a significant increase. Um, and the accuracy will always be very high. So those are the kind of caveats when it comes to dealing with crossbows. You are going to have high damage. You're going to have a low reload. So right now, though, I would give this a mid-tier just because um, even though there's only one other option to choose from, I feel like the Archer is good in both low quantity and high quantity at this tier range because their reload speed is just going to outpace the crossbow by such a high margin. Looking over at the Vlandian Footman, though, we get a pretty exceptional soldier. Uh, this has got the second highest armor of any tier 2 soldier. Also, they have a pull arm and a sword and a shield so they have a very solid kit here whereas most units will have one or the other so a very very good all-around uh, unit and in addition to that they have a static loadout all three of their loadouts for the most part are the same uh, with the differing spear and helmet on this one but for the most part again nice and simple so you won't deal with a ton of variance when you recruit these guys and they're more likely to uh, try, uh, uh, to progress to tier 3 than a lot of the other tier 2 units, which will tend to get cut down a little bit easier. But I think that these guys are a good high rank versus uh, some of the other ones we've taken a look at in tier 2. So just to recap real quick, we have a mid rank on the Levy Crossbowman and a high rank on the Volandian Footman. Let's now jump over to tier 3. Tier 3, I think, is probably one of the hardest ones or Volandia. I think it's they struggle in a lot of places here, starting with the crossbowman. Now, the crossbowman has a good deal of armor, a lot more than its usual other archer counterparts. But again, it's still 
is a crossbowman with a heavy crossbow you can see it's got a speed of 61 and a damage of 87 pierce so if i were to compare this to a trained imperial archer we can look at the mounting mountain hunting bow which is not too excellent and the speed is 86 and the damage is 46. so you're basically looking at 25 speed difference and around double damage so you're going to drop significantly in speed your crossbow skill is going to add only about let's just say five percent more speed here so you're not going to really be increasing a whole ton and you don't have any real difference from your standard kind of archer you're for the most part a guy on foot with a bow or a crossbow and a sword so you don't really have a ton of things above that archer and i feel like it's it's not as excellent but it's still a considerable amount of damage if used in mass. So I think that these guys giving a nice mid rank is still pretty fair. And I'm going to be honest with you, for the most part, I find that crossbowmen aren't terrible, but they just aren't great. And I'm going to explain that more as we jump into the hardened crossbowmen in the next tier. Moving over to the Vlandian Spearmen. Um, and also you can kind of parallel this with the infantry because they're almost identical units. Taking a look at the two. You can see they have almost the exact same loadout too. The only difference here is 70 one-handed, 70 polearm, and 70 athletics. Over here, guess what? 70, 70, and 70. I was kidding. There's not a difference. So these two units, the um, for the most part, when it comes to their skills or loadout, it's pretty much the same. The only difference is, of course, though, is what they're going to progress down to in tiers four and tier five. And when we look at them, um, they don't have excellent armor. 16, 15, 19, 14, other things by that at tier three just have a lot better staying power, especially when we look at Kazate, who has like a whopping like 50 some odd body armor. So the Kazate, or I'm sorry, the uh, Vlandian Spearmen and, and Infantry, they just don't really have a ton going for them. The Spearman, he has the same kit across all of his variations. So at least you get minimal variance. But when we look at the Infantry Soldier, he does get a different sword, an axe, and an axe. So I actually, to be totally honest, I like that he has a little variance in here because I find that getting that variance can be pretty good for certain situations. Say if this infantry soldier was fighting against a higher tier infantry soldier with more armor, axes and maces tend to do a little bit more damage to that situation. They do get decent shields, which is a nice situation to deal with. You know, you can have um, any of the Batanian shields, which are just small little circular shields, which don't really do a whole ton. Um, and for the most part, they're just kind of bland. So I'm going to give a rank to both the spearmen and the infantrymen at a low, which is unfortunate. And I think that this is the kind of bottleneck for Volandia is that tier three. The crossbowmen are not super exceptional, and the spearmen and infantrymen or infantry are just not good uh, with them both being a low rank and your crosswoman at a mid rank you're really relying on that noble line to push your soldiers into tier four and when we go over the noble line we'll discuss why uh, having a low rank tier three infantry is not as terrible when it comes to comparing against just the the ball crushing awesomeness of the heavy cavalry of vlandia that concludes tier three again real real, real quick mid low and low let's jump now over to tier four tier four is where things start to get a little bit different especially for the hardened crosswoman for volandia now <clears throat> the the hardened crosswoman uh is solid it's got a lot of really good armor here and it finally adds a big nice shield to the situation now with that shield it actually becomes a very decent combatant if it actually gets pushed into melee combat or if it's in a siege and it needs to scale walls it at least has some protection so i think that this kind of gives it a little bit more value in the long run i would really like to see the ai um turn their back to the enemy when they reload their crossbow the way that these shields were intended to be used um, obviously they can't plant them in front of them if they could that'd be even better now one of the biggest issues with all the crossbowmen and i was saving it for this one to talk about is that the bolt never progresses in rank when you take a look at some of the other um one of the, some of the other let's go to azrai archer some of the other archers you get um things that at least progress in weapon tier. 
Uh, the barbed arrows is probably a terrible example here, but um, still, when you're looking at the bolt, it is always zero additional pierce damage, and it always is just one single stack of bolts. No matter what tier we're looking at, they only get 20 shots, no matter what. So when you take a look at these guys compared to pure archers, what is supposed to be their role, right? A ranged archer or a ranged missile unit, then they kind of start to fall short because you're realizing that almost every other pure archer gets two stacks or two quivers. And as they progress through their tiers, they get access to better and better archer, or I'm sorry, better and better uh, arrows or quivers. The bolt still just stays the same. I think one of the biggest issues with crossbows is that they don't do what they're supposed to do, right? They're not doing more damage to armor than an archer does. For the most part, they do the blanket amount of damage, and it always seems to just wreck house no matter what. So, I think the biggest thing that's supposed to be going for crossbows just doesn't exist. But again, like I said, they've got great armor and shields, um, and with their 100 crossbow skill, we're starting to finally get a little bit closer to the reload speed because of the bonus from the personal skill of an, a low tier bow. So at least things are getting a little bit better, but I would still rank these as a mid rank just because I still think that a pure archer does better. Even the Sturgeon archer, the Sturgeon hunter, I believe it is at this rank, um, which we rated as a low rank in the Sturgeon video, I still think can just pour enough damage down range to rival these guys. But I think the hardened crossbowman still brings so many other things to the table as far as being way more survivable and having the ability to fight a little bit better in close combat with that shield edges it above its Sturgeon counterpart. Now looking at the Billman, we have another pretty interesting situation. He brings this nice beefy short bill to the table with 124 swing damage. Now the Billman we're gonna be comparing against stuff like the uh, Sturgeon Berserker, the Falksman, the Manavliaton, things that have two-handed weapons and that is like their staying power, that is what they do, or the Mamluk uh, Guard, which eventually progresses to the Palace Guard. Now, with this situation, we get a situation like I said 15 times. It's Jersey, Jersey Shore over here. But the swing damage on this bad boy is 124. That's the second highest damage behind the Falks at 126. Also, he brings a decent amount of armor to the table at 16, 31, 15, and 20. And he gets good athletics. The only one that rivals this is, of course, the Berserker at 130 athletics, but he stays really good at 110, still staying above his competition. So I don't think he has the most armor, right? The Berserkers got better, um, the Manavliotons got better, and the Mamluk Guard has got comparable amounts. But I think across all these other situ or these other, <laughs> almost said it again, all of these other statistics, um, he still keeps that good, solid mid rank. He's not the best, like the Berserker and the Manavliaton are, because I think the Berserker can dish out so much damage, and the Manavliaton can take so much damage and also dish it out as well. But the Billman still kind of has a solid amount of armor, pushing it above the Falksman, and a really great amount of damage, keeping it in line with the uh, Mamluk Guard. Now, mid rank again for the Billman, but pushing into the light cav, we get a, a, a really kind of um, not fun cavalry unit for Volandia. But that's to be expected, right? The, the noble line is where you're going to find the main staying power of your mounted army. These guys, unfortunately, have a terrible horse, uh, just a disgusting saddle horse, which is just no good for anyone. They have very, very low armor at 16, 18, 15, and 29. Remember, we're comparing these to other non-noble line um, mounted soldiers. Now, that would be stuff like the Batanian Scout or the Kazate Lancer. Just to give you a, a comparison here, we were comparing the Kazate Lancer to noble line soldiers because it was so decked out and so good. The Kazate Lancer gets 100 riding, which is great. And this progresses even higher to the Heavy Lancer that gets 150. So, the Kazay Lancer also gets a War Horse, very similar to the Batanian Scout, who also gets a Batanian Pony. I thought I got the War Mount, that's the Horseman. So, at least the Batanian Pony compares a little bit to the Saddle Horse, but not really. And at the same time, too, the Light Cavalry just doesn't get that much armor. Um, he does have a nice good spear with a long, fine steel spear, which is one of the longest reaching spears in the game, which is good. 
gets a nice good shield with the reinforced cav shield and also a ridged arming sword but one of the biggest kind of achilles heels for this guy is he gets 100 throwing but where's that going to go to use so it's got to be swapped with one-handed and we do have a number of situations like this too where uh the oath sworn has a, has a uh kind of offset skill and that isn't really awesome <laughs> and i think that once skills kind of get rebalanced it would help this soldier out but as it is he gets a low rank because of the offset skills terrible armor not a great horse and just kind of an awkward placement ac across the entire board here Moving over to the Vlandian Swordsman, we get a very solid soldier in the tier 4 um, uh, ranking. Now, he has a wide range of weapons. Of course, he starts with just a simple sword, but another one gives him a mace, which is really great against heavily armored units, especially at the tier 4 and tier 5 level. And he gets an axe, which is that kind of nice uh, middle ground. Also, on top of it, he's got a spear. So this guy can really threaten all range of opposing units and be very solid in sieges as well i think that's one i really enjoy about a lot of the higher tier blondian soldiers they have a really awesome kit we're going to see that with the sergeant and the volgier in a little bit but their ability to kind of be um a jack of all trades in a lot of situations i think is a really big strength whereas normally it would be a detractor because it kind of reduces their specialization but they do a high amount of damage too their sword is one of the highest damage swords out there um, of course the batanians have just tanks for swords uh, they also have a decent amount of armor and i think that once you get the infantry soldier to the swordsman that's your real big reward there because the sergeant uh, really kind of takes things off from there and the swordsman can, can really hold the line in the way that the infantry soldier I wish did. I think the biggest issue here is there's such a huge jump in quality from tier 3 to tier 4 with just the Volandian infantry and I think that's pretty un unfortunate. And I would give this guy a mid rank. So quickly recapping, we're going to be mid for the hardened crossbowman. It is going to be mid for the billman low for the light cavalry and then it is mid for the swordsman let's now talk about tier five before closing things out with our noble line tier five let's talk about it now we are talking about the sharpshooter and it's going to be the same thing we've talked about with some of the other crossbowmen it's still just one stack of bolts <clears throat> and that bolt doesn't have an increasing tier so it's going to suffer but with the bound crossbow, we get 100 damage and 100 accuracy. And that is worth noting. With every shot from a crossbow, it is hopefully on target. Of course, they're going to miss, but it's trying to say that what you're aiming at is pretty much going to hit as long as that thing doesn't move. With a bow, you're shooting from the chest. It's got a 94 accuracy, so there's still a light, there's still a 6%, quote unquote, 6% margin for error. I know it's not actually percentage here, but um, it's saying that what you're directly aiming at at the center of the reticle is going to have a small, slight kind of deviation. Now, one thing to take a look at here is with crossbow at uh, was 130, 130 skill, we're getting a 9.1% reload bonus. So that's going to bring this thing up quite a bit. Let's just say six, round it to 10 for uh, easy math, bring us to around 69 speed. It's quite good. Now, um, when we look though, at this the Azurai Master Archer, Azurai Master Archer, which I consider probably one of the best archers outside of the noble lines. It has 160 skill, giving it a 17.6% bow damage on top of his step recurve bow and the four piercing damage of the piercing arrows. This comes out to like something like 75, 76 total damage. So it's not that far behind the sharpshooter. And he's just going to be able to get that many more shots down range. I, I know I'm kind of beating this point to a, to a pulp. But I think that this keeps the sharpshooter at a mid rank. Even though he still gets a nice good sword. And that good shield that he carries over from tier 4. Now looking at the Volgier and the Pikeman. We get a very... Um, I think that what's what's wrong here is the, the Volgier is amazing and the Pikeman is terrible. And I think the Pikeman relies on a mechanic that has not yet been put into single player with being able to brace your spear. The Pikeman uses a pike. And that pike relies on being braced to really do damage. So when I even compare these two units against each other, the Pikeman just doesn't have the amount of armor to even compare to the Volgier, and it does a low damage because the Pike itself doesn't have a ton of damage. So it's unfortunate, but when we 
Now look at the Volgier. It is amazing. It's got an awesome kit. It has got a Volge, it has got a broad two-hander, it's got a ridge-tipped arming sword, and it has throwing axes. And if I kind of vary this around, for the most part, it's all the same. So, I really like this unit. And uh, even comparing it to the other ones in its class, like the Ulf Hednar, like the Elite Manavliaton, the Veteran Falksman, the Palace Guard, it's still, I think, even though it doesn't have the most armor, it can threaten such a wide range of units that I think it kind of gets a little bit of a leg up because of that. It have, doesn't have terrible armor. It still has decent armor here, but I think it's so well-rounded that it can be really good in an open field fight. It can be great in a close quarters field fight once things really kind of get into a, a strong melee, and it can be very great in sieges. I, I love this unit. It's one of my favorite ones, so I'm going to be giving it a high rank. And the pikeman, you guessed it, it's a low rank for that little guy. Moving over to the Vanguard, we get uh, just a huge upgrade from the Light Cavalry. Um, but it still suffers from having a terrible horse. That saddle horse has stayed with him from Tier 4 into Tier 5. Um, also, though, he gets a braceable spear. He gets a lance, Blondian Lance. Um, now I'm going to bring up the Heavy Lancer because, guy, again, this guy is like the cream of the crop when it comes to non-noble line cavalry. And... He has really good armor, 42, 60, 52, 28, real solid. This guy, really not terrible at all. 40, 46, 43, and 36. I think he has a lot of really good qualities about him, but I think that when comparing him to the Heavy Lancer, he just doesn't stack up 100%, especially because Blondie relies on its noble line for really its heavy shock cav damage. So the Vanguard gets a nice mid rank for me. Um, I think it could be it could be a high rank if it had a little bit better of a horse or just something that kind of tipped it over to the uh, to that high rank uh, situation. Uh, when we look at the Heavy Lancer, it gets a step war horse and it gets that 150 riding. So it is already kind of outpacing um, the Vanguard by comparison. Now, our last unit here in Tier 5 is the Vlandian Sergeant. And this is another one I've always really liked. It has had its kit changed a little bit since launch when it used to also have a two-hander, very similar to the Volgier. But now, it has a mace, which we know is really good against armor. It has a sword, and it has an axe. So, I like the amount of damage again that the sergeant can do it has a really good amount of armor it doesn't compare to the imperial legionary which has the most armor but at 41 44 42 and 34 it has a lot of great staying power in addition its skills 130 one-handed 130 polearm and 130 athletics so its skills are all in line with its quote-unquote use case which i really like um, and it has a very long spear yet again with a long fine steel spear giving it like I said before, the longest reach of a spear that isn't a lance. So, I absolutely love the sergeant. And in my video discussing my favorite units per class, I said the sergeant was uh, grade A, top of the uh, best of the best. It isn't as good as it used to be because of the, uh, the way its kit has changed a little bit, but I still give it a high rank because, like I said before, it can threaten across such a wide range of additional units on open field, melee, sieges, every kind of scenario you'd want him to be in. He can really, he can really prosper. And also, he has a huge shield, man. Like a massive shield. Look at the guy. Reinforced Oaken Kite Shield. Just very bueno. Now, going across the line, one more time to recap. The Sharpshooter is mid-rank. Olgier is high rank, Pikeman is an abysmal low rank, the Vanguard is a mid rank, and then the Sergeant is a high rank. Now let's talk about the Noble line for Vlandia, which I'm sure we all know is amazing. The Noble line, the cream of the crop, the top tier of Vlandia, and really the biggest driving force behind them, right? These heavy shock cavalry style units that everyone loves, especially the AI when they're pushing against Sturgia. Now, um, one of the standout things with the Volandia and Shock Cav, or Noble Line for this matter, is that their Tier 2 unit is on horseback. When I compare this to the Sturgians or to the Imperials, they both start on foot. Uh, the Imperials get mounted into a horse with their Equite Line, which is their Tier 3, and they stay on a horse throughout. But the Sturgians don't mount a horse until their latter two steps in their Druznik. So, 
It's important to note that when you're trying to level up the Volandian Squire in the mid to late game in your actual army, they're going to survive, I think, a little bit better than the alternative ones that are going to be on foot. Um, my personal opinion, if you're trying to level up your Squire and you're in that mid to late game, you're probably better off putting them into a garrison to automatically level up or use your leadership skills, which will allow them to level up and maybe put them on their own standaway formation and have them just kill looters kind of pushes their level up quicker quicker but the squire has got a little bit of an evolution over time it got a uh, shield it got a better uh, loadout with a helmet and its chest piece so it's gotten a little bit stronger as time has gone on it also has a mace in one of its loadouts i think it's a sword and then an axe oh no it's another mace so spiked mace on two of its three loadouts now pushing over here to the gallant or the gallant we get another really strong unit and this guy actually um, stays the line very well. Now the big thing here, the big kind of army to beat or, or unit to beat is the cataphract. Now comparing it to the equite, the equite has 100 polearm and then 60, I'm sorry, 70 riding and 70 one handed. Comparing this back across to Volandia, we're looking at 100, 170. So it's a very nice skill set that really outshines by comparison to the imperial line i know that we could be comparing this to the uh, sturgians but like i said they don't mount up into those last two tiers and even then i think volandia is a better shock cav than uh, sturgia now when we jump to the volandian knight um oh and also worth noting I would give the Volandian Squire a rank of mid because it's not necessarily super strong outside of getting to tier three as fast as possible. I um, mean, it doesn't have a lot of uh, uh, ways to threaten things because of its lower armor. I think it, it can get killed a little too easily. In the early game, I think it's very strong, but I think after that early game portion, it falls off quickly. So I want to take, I want to keep it at a mid rank. But for the Gallant, a mid rank, or I'm sorry, a high rank. And then for the Knight, it's interesting because we look at his one handed at 100, and we look at his pull arm at 110, and his riding at 100. Well, let's jump back over here to the Imperial line. The Heavy Horseman gets 150 pull arm with a 40 skill bump over it. So that does kind of put it a little bit heavier of a. Uh, of a shooting bracket, I guess you could say, or of a hitting bracket. Also, it's got an armor of 27, 35, 26, and 31, compared to 17, 29, 35, and 33. So the armor is kind of a little wonkopotamus here, and the uh, weapon loadout are a mace, or is a mace, followed by an arming sword, and then another mace. So we keep that double mace, single sword action well into the uh, fourth tier, or I guess, yeah, tier four, for uh, the Volandian shock cap. So I still think that they are a high rank. And I think the same thing is true of the champion all the way down to a banner knight. The three of these, or four of these, are all high rank in my opinion. And I think it's because they also threaten differently than the cataphract. One of the biggest differences between these two is their horse. The Banner Knight gets a Courser, while as the Elite Cataphract, the top tier shock cav for the Imperial Army gets the Imperial Charger. So it's a bit of a drop in horse tier quality, and that is unfortunate. Of course, they get the Imperial Scale Barding, which is better than the Chainmail Barding of the Volandia, um, but they also have a very limited kit. They get an Imperial Lance, then they get Knight's Kite Shield, Fine Steel Paramirian, and that is it. It's the same thing all the way around, just a different shoulder armor. So when we look back, though, at the Banner Knight, we get the Volandian Lance, the Reinforced Cavalry Kite Shield, and then the Ridged Arming Sword. And this evolves into either the Northern Spiked Battle Axe or the Western Mace. I think as a whole, this makes for a really strong well-rounded unit once more. That's kind of been the, the, the saving grace of Landia, is that it constantly has the ability to threaten on siege warfare, in close melee, in close cav-to-cav -cav melee, where it's not using its pull arms anymore. They're strictly switched over to one-handed weapon. And they also get a leg up in that. The Banner Knight gets 20 more one-handed skill than its elite cataphract counterpart. They sit at a, a measly 200, but a 200 to 220, that is some difference. When we take a look at the skill, we can see that it's one-handed damage at 30% and 14% speed, in comparison to the Banner Knight at 33 and 15% uh, damage and speed. So, 
Banner Knight is still good. Its armor is a little bit lower than the Imperial uh, counterpart, and that's what we're going to expect, especially when we talk about the Imperial unit guide. Their armor is always going to be aces, but I think that the different, the varying kit loadout of the Banner Knight and uh, the overall staying ability and punching ability makes for a high rank soldier, especially in the Noble Line. Like when you think of Shock Cav, you think of the Banner Knight and the Elite Cataphract. Those are the top two, in my opinion. But this concludes our noble line for Volandia. So let's just sum up our video now, kind of going over everything at a high level. So what to say? What, what closing thoughts do I have for Volandia? And I think that of all of the factions that I've played, Volandia is up there as one of my favorite because I enjoy the kind of Western European approach that it takes with the military. Um, but with that being said, I find that Volandia bottlenecks very hard in that third tier. Remember, we talked about the Volandia and Crossbowmen only being a measly mid tier or mid rank, sorry, with the Spearmen and the Infantry being in that low rank. It's very, very hard to deal with because the rest of your army is gated by two subpar infantry soldiers. Now, of course, those guys are then supplemented very heavily by an amazing noble line out of Volandia where they just have just amazing cavalry that can just plummet or i'm sorry pummel anything so you do get at least an anchor or a crutch that can secure your line and if you use that cavalry properly then you can really do a ton of damage by getting them to flank into the opposing units archers or even counter charging their cavalry or just doing whatever you can to really do a lot of damage to their army using that noble line i think it's it's the saving grace of volandia now, when we look at the rest of Volandian units, though, we get something that is um, very well-rounded, right? Everything has a solid amount of armor. Um, nothing, uh, for the most part, suffers armor-wise compared to other factions. Other factions either are grossly under Volandia or just a little bit above. In fact, I would say that as an average, Volandia is probably the second most armored faction behind the Imperials. Now, I think it's a little bit of a generalization, but I guess I'm just kind of talking if we're looking at the average of each one of their armor values. Now, looking at the bottom tier, the, the rank five for Volandia, we start to really get some pace being brought up with the Volgier and the Sergeant both being standout exceptional soldiers. And the Volandian Vanguard is a really good, solid, non noble line cavalry, but I think that still that Volandian Sharpshooter does push against the overall viability of the range units in Volandia. I think that what's really going to be a telling thing for this army is when spear bracing becomes a thing in single player, it's currently in multiplayer, and when crossbows get a little bit more figuring out. Right now, they don't do any more or less damage per se than uh, um, a bow and arrow, and bolts themselves have a static tier. They're always tier one, and they always they don't do any additional damage um, uh, via their, their tiers, like, say, the piercing arrows, so on and so forth. So once that gets figured out, I think that Vlandi and Crossbowmen will be very different, and they'll have a different target, right? I want crossbows to do more damage to armor and i want bows to do more damage to less armor so it kind of balances itself out right now that doesn't exist so overall these are my impressions of the vlandian unit guide here i know this is one that a lot of you guys wanted to see here so i wanted to get it out to you our next one will be on the imperial army and that will conclude all six of our unit guides for mountain blade to bannerlord we will continue to do these as this evolves though so if there is a big kind of uh, swap around a lot of the armor and skills of the units. I will do an up updated unit guide probably when we do a full launch of the game. Um, and one thing that I know a lot of you are going to make a comment about, um, I'm from Southern California, so the way I say the word cavalry sounds like calvary to a lot of you. So if you hear me and you think I'm saying C-A-L-V-A-R-Y, I am not. I am saying cavalry. It's just the way I say it quickly uh, because I am... Uh, an illiterate surfer from Southern California. <laughs> but as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Go ahead and let me know in the comment section below what you thought about this unit guide. Do you feel that maybe the Billman or it, the Billman is better than what I said, or the Volger is garbage and you like the Pikeman more? Let me know what your thoughts are and what your experiences are using Volandia on the fields of Colorado. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one and take care.